Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. That doesn't sound like a grateful people. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Can we begin to give God some praise in this place? Hallelujah. This is our fire starting intercessory time. This is an opportunity and a moment where we're able to come before the Lord and experience him. So I'm going to ask everyone, if you would please stand. Come on, let's stand all over the building. Let's stand. Hallelujah. And this morning, I want us to do something. Um, as we embark on experiencing God this morning, I want us to let go of our resistance. Sometimes when we come in the house of God, it's like, well, you know, I expect God, you know, to do this. I expect God to do that. But we got to get intentional with God. What we're asking God for is what we know we need. What we're asking God for is what we know we need. I'm not asking him for what I want my neighbor to think I need. I'm asking him for what I really need. So come on, let's lift up our voices. Come on, let's lift up our voices. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Offer no Tobashiah. Come on, offer no resistance. Lift up your voice. Come on. How it sounds when you offer no resistance, you lift up your voice. Come on, Father, I lay my will down this morning. I lay down my agenda. I lay down my plans. I lay down my wants. I lay down my desires. I lay it down and I offer no resistance. I offer no resistance to what you want to do this morning. Father, you have an agenda. And this morning, Lord. God, we come into agreement with the agenda of heaven this morning. We say, God, what we desire is what you desire. What we want is what you want. We don't want another thing. But God, this morning, we want you this morning. Father, our cry from earth to heaven is give us Jesus. This morning, our cry is give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Jesus, give us your presence. Give us your glory. Give us your glory. Give us your glory. Give us your power. Give us your anointing. Give us your strength. Give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. The risen Savior. The great I am. The Lord of Lords. The lily in the valley. The bright and morning star. Give us Jesus. Yeah, oh, shit, I, uh, give us Jesus, 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 uh, we cry out uh, for the living God, uh, our souls uh, cry out for you. Come on and cry out for Jesus. Shiba. <laughs> Come on, cry out. Hey, Shoto. Hey, Shiba. We cry out for you. We want you this morning. We need you this morning. We desire you. Our souls cry out for the living God. You will deliver. So deliver. Come in this place. Heal. Come in this place. Rafa. Come in this place. Jehovah. Come in this place. Elohim. Come in this place. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord. 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 Come on, you don't sound desperate enough. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands, O oh, ye gates, and be ye lifted up, the everlasting doors, and the king, and the king, and the king of glory, who is strong and mighty, mighty in battle, shall come in, shall 
hell. Come in. Come in, Jesus. 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 Come. Come on, pull on him. Come on, pull on him. Pull on him. Pull on him. Pull on him. Whatever you need is in the room. Pull on them. We offer no resistance. 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 We need it. We need it. We need it. We need your presence. We need your glory. So, Father, we say, come, Lord Jesus. Ho, ho. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Hey, I see the heavens opening up. Come, Lord Jesus. Hey, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come in this place and flip the script. Come in this place and flip the narrative. We want you, Lord God. This morning, our souls cry out for the living God. Hey, come in these marriages. Come in these bodies. Hey, Oto Shata. Come in these bodies. Deal with arthritis. Deal with diabetes. Deal with high blood pressure. Deal with infirmity. Come this morning. Come in these bodies. Oh, the healer. Let the healing power of Jesus come in this place. And we say, Father, have your way like only you can. As a sign of your agreement, give God some glory in this place. That's too low. I said, give God glory, not give me. Don't give your neighbor. Give God glory because you are in the last moments of what you've been going through. You are in the last moments of the struggle. You're in the last moments of depression. You're in the last moments of infirmity. You're in the last moments of lack. Give him glory. Come on, come on, come on. Stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Stay there. We talking about Jesus here. We talking about Jesus here. We talking about the one who rose, who died for you and rose for you. We talking about the one who cares about your problems. We talking about the things that's weighing heavy on you. Heavy on you. We talking about Jesus. Lift them up. Lift them up. Lift them up. Hallelujah. The Bible declares in Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. He just, he just spoke a word saying your circumstances and your situations. He said that you at your last stages, the last stage of your situation. Did you imagine that? You imagine that? Now I'm going to tell you something about, real quick about when, when payday rolls around for us all. Oh, how we feel when we're about to get paid. But think about those last stages that you're in of your problems, that you're about to get paid by being delivered from your problems, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. All things, all things, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace and peace, new hope. That's my favorite scripture. Romans 8:28. And we know that all things work together 
We've been talking about the rock being the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you realize that he is everything that you need here and even in the future, there is nothing too small that he won't handle. There is nothing too big that he can't handle. When you make him your everything, you got it all. Hallelujah.
up to their mom and they reach up to their dad. Pick me up, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. Ooh, Ooh God is here to lift you out of your situation. Lift you. Ooh, we lift you, God. We lift you, God. Oh. One thing I desire only this I'll seek, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture, laying at your feet. Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This friend, most beautiful, most beautiful, dearest father, closest friend, most beautiful, 
most beautiful. One thing I desire, only the sound sea, just to dwell, dwell, dwell. If forever this would be my posture, I'm gonna lay at your feet. Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell. If forever, help me say, dearest Father, my closest friend is so beautiful.
Father God, as once again I come before your throne of grace and mercy, Lord. Thanking you, God, and giving you all the praises, God. Thank you for an opportunity, God, to just speak about your word, God, and your goodness. Lord, I ask you, Lord Jesus, that there's something said or done that blesses us to just keep on believing to keep on exercising our faith. Decrease me, Lord, and increase yourself in me. I thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'll be reading, good morning. I'll be coming from the 16th chapter of Matthew, verses 17 through 18. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You may be seated. Giving all praises to God, honor to my Bush Bishop and First Lady Roberts in their absence. <laughs> Ministers, deacons, and all of you, my sisters and brothers in Christ. This morning, I'm gonna tell you a few stories. And at the end, you may or may not remember them. But it is my hope that at the end, you will remember Jesus. First, let's define what a rock is. When I looked up the definition of rock, I found that it is naturally occurring. And it is made up of two or three minerals. It's the basic unit with which the solid earth is comprised. Engineers define rock to be hard, a durable material that cannot be excavated without blasting. The very definition is based on strength and durability. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. And with further research, I found that the rock is referenced 140 two times in the Bible, and most of them referring to God. Now any experienced builder knows that a structure cannot stand without a firm foundation upon this rock. And I don't know about you, but the very phrase upon this rock, I could just stop right there, right there. I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against this. In the Bible, the rock 
and stone means strength, steadiness, and durability. The prophets use these metaphors to convey the unwavering character of God. We need to have a spiritual foundation, church, and a solid structure in our lives. But there's one thing for sure, and another for certain, that there will be things sent your way to discourage, discredit, and disappoint you. But I want to remind you that you're standing on a firm foundation. So the next time that that little fellow sits on your shoulder and tells you that you're not good enough, he sits there and tells you that you don't measure up or that you just cannot cut it. You tell him that you must not know about me. You tell him that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not a couple of things, not two or three things, but I can do all things through Christ. I read a post on Facebook that Marie posted a few days ago. It simply said, the devil is a lie. When I read it, I chuckled to myself and I thought, you know what, it was short, it was simple, it was strong and resolute. Marie was not playing. She said, no explanation needed, the devil is a lie. You see, sometimes we need reminding. Sometimes we're not cognizant. Sometimes we're forgetful or have a lapse in our memory about just who the rock is and what that means to us as believers. I'm reminded of a story. I, I think I read it in college. It's called The Allegory of the Cave. In this story, there were people chained inside a cave. Uh, they sat in the cave year after year and watched shadows on the cave walls, which to them looked like flames. Till one day, one of the men got loose from his shackles and ventured outside. It took a, lot, it took a while before his eyes could come into focus, because how many of you know that when you're in darkness, it takes a minute for your eyes to focus? But when they did, he realized that what he thought were flames was actually people carrying things and going about their daily lives. Well, he got so excited about the good news, he got so excited, he ran to tell the others what he had discovered. But instead of them being happy, instead of them being hopeful, they got angry. You see, they had lived in darkness so long that they wouldn't let themselves believe. Tell somebody, this is a faith journey. People that refuse to even let themselves believe, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. These are the kind of people, I don't care how you try to encourage and uplift them, they will always be the victim. Uh, they will always find fault in everyone else. They won't let themselves believe or exercise their faith in the rock the firm foundation, the great I am. Because when you're in darkness, you can't be optimistic. You don't have the ability to look on the bright side. Darkness is heavy and it's foreboding. Thus, that's exactly what the devil wants you to think. That's exactly how he wants you to feel. But you got to remind the devil sometimes. You got to remind yourself sometimes that God is greater. See, I remember the time I didn't have nothing to eat, but God filled up my cupboards. I remember the time when I thought I couldn't go any further, but God gave me some more resolve. I remember the time I thought my job was over, but he gave me a better one. God is greater. I want you to know that we serve a God that cannot lie upon this rock. And I'm going to tell you something about our God. You don't even need physical eyes. Ask Stevie Wonder. You don't need physical eyes because my Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. You see, doubt and fear, although they seem 
real. It's only an illusion. The devil wants you to look at your problems with your physical eyes, but the devil, Marie, is a lie. Psalms 46 says, God is my refuge, a very present help in times of trouble. Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against this, against it. Ask yourself, are we not the church? Are we not the church? The mountains in your life, the stress will give you the illusion that, you won't, that it won't get better. It'll tell you to throw in the towel that nobody can survive this. I know because I have been there. I have been so low, I didn't think I could go any lower. I had been so low, I didn't think I was ever going to come up again. But you know what I discovered when I got down there? Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. I was working at Aspire. I was a paraprofessional. And that summer... I don't know what happened, but I was really struggling. I was really low. So I said, I'm going to go to the trustee's office. So I went to the trustee's office, and they told me to go get some paperwork. So I got some paperwork, and I went back to the trustee's office. They sent me back. They said, go get some more paperwork. I took the paperwork back, and they told me, now go back and get your children. So I gathered all my children, and I went to the trustee's office, only to be told, no. They could not help me. But before I left, an older lady that worked at the trustee's office, she grabbed my arm, and she said, God told me to tell you that you will never have to come in here again. <laughs> Remember that, don't you? And so I went to school, and it was around about this time. It was in November. I was working in the classroom as a paraprofessional, and my principal came into the classroom and asked me to step out. I stepped out of the classroom, and she asked me, she said, Ms. White, do you want to be a teacher? And I said, well, yeah. I said, actually, I'm, I'm going to school. I'm working on my master's in education now. But I hadn't told anybody. God woke me up one night and said, you need to go and ma major in education. And so I did, a little to me, you know, unbeknownst to me that she would ask me that. And she said, well, go ahead. HR is in the parent room. And I went in there that day and I signed my papers. When I came back from Christmas, I was a teacher. I was an academic specialist. I was an academic specialist. And just a few months before, remember, I was down and I was low. But I'm here to tell you that God is a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of storm. I got a lot of stories like that, believe it or not. But God, but God. So I'm here to tell you that all these things are designed to keep you from your purpose. God gave us everything. Everything that he made has a purpose. The bees have a purpose. They pollinate the plants that give us food. The birds have a purpose. They carry the seeds that make the plant. Animals have a purpose. They prey on each other, they give us food, and they give us clothing. Everything has a purpose. The plants give us oxygen, and what do we give them? Carbon monoxide. We die one of them. I'm getting confused. But anyway, everything has a purpose. Um, one day, I was watching a centipede, a thousand leg, go across my wall. And uh, I was just thinking, you know, what am I going to do about this thousand leg, this centipede? Now, most people would have just, and it would have been over. But here's me thinking, what am I going to do with this thousand leg? So I Googled it. I Googled, 
what's the purpose of a thousand led? And you know what I found to my surprise? Was that the thousand led eats all the other insects in your house. Yes. And so even though they look nasty, they really serve a purpose because God does everything with intent. So I decided right then that we wasn't going to get married, but we are going to live together. Yeah, and he, he goes, I see him often high. You know, I just let him alone because I know what he's doing. I don't see spiders because I know he's eating them up. So you have to know that you too have a purpose and diamonds are formed under pressure. You see, we can't be nonchalant. We can't be lackadaisical with the gift of life that God has given us. Um, whatever your background, God has a purpose for you. You got to remember that God is intentional. Matter of fact, tell your neighbor that you have a purpose. If you did not have a purpose, you would not exist. Everybody has a purpose. When the seeds of doubt start to form in your mind, remind yourself that I have a purpose. When the seeds of doubt start to form and you start condemning yourself, remind yourself that I have a purpose. When the seeds of doubt start to form in your mind, tell the devil to get out of my way because I have a purpose. I have a job to do and a God to glorify. <laughs> Upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We live in a world filled with struggle and strife. Sometimes there's no hope in this life. Each way we turn, folks are suffering so, with no peace, nowhere, no heartache, just woe. I wish I could tell them the solution is plain. Just call on the rock and trust in his name. In him I found a peace that the world cannot know. For it came from my rock Jesus when I gave him control. Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Come on, let's put our hands together right there again. Oh, y'all could do better than that. That was kind of weak. Come on, put your hands together right there. That was good. I need about 10 more folks just to jump to your feet and give God a praise right there where you stand. Come on, you can do better than that. She said, up on this rock. I'll build my church. Come on, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Has anybody had to build anything in the face of the enemy? I'm still gonna build. With no money in my pocket, I'm still gonna build. With nobody supporting me, I'm still gonna build. Do I got any builders in the church on this morning? We all know what it feels like to demolish something. But it's a whole different story to build something. Lord, have mercy. I need everybody here to open up your mouth and give God a praise right there, right there. Come on, right there, right there. Y'all acting a little dry like I want to be here. But I said open up your mouth and give God a praise right there. I don't know if y'all, I don't know if y'all really heard what she was saying. She said that she went to the welfare office and she had to take her children. See, most people go without their kids. But she took her children and she said the lady spoke a word to her life. 
and said that you would never have to come into this place again because she was building. Lord, have mercy. And let me tell you something. It's nothing like having somebody on your side when you build or something and say, man, you can do it. A girl, you can do it. I need you to look down your road real quick and say, whatever you're building, it shall come to pass. Now thank God for somebody else's building. Thank God for somebody else's building. They might be the one to sign your check. Thank God for somebody else's building. Yeah. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together for Minister White. It's offering time, New Hope. I don't get quiet now. It's offering time, New Hope. It's offering time, New Hope. scripture on the board, well on the screens. This is 2 Kings chapter 4. And I want you all to listen to this story as I read it, all right? It says, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah saying, thou servant, my husband is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear Jehovah. And my creditor is come to take unto him my two children to be bondsmen. Verse 2 says, come on. Verse 2. I'll wait. Take your time. We'll wait. Y'all let me know when it moves. Here we go. Verse 2, and it says, it says this. Elijah said, I wonder, how can I be of help? Tell me, what do you have in your house? The woman said, nothing, she said. Well, do I have a little oil? Here's what you do. Elijah said, go up and down the street and borrow jugs and bowls from all of your neighbors. Lord, have mercy. And just not a few, but all that you can get. Then come home and lock the door behind you and your sons. Then he gave him instructions. He says, pour oil into each container. When each is full, set it aside. She did what he said. She locked the door behind her and her sons. As they brought the containers to her, she filled them. When all the jugs and bowls were full, she said to one of her sons, give me another jug, please. He said, that's it. There are no more jugs. Bible says, then the oil stayed, not stopped or ran out, but stayed. Lord, have mercy. If I was preaching an offering sermon, my topic would be, he's done more than I've ever expected. Not because I had what I thought I should have, Lord have mercy, but because I gave all that I had. So when it comes to offering, a lot of people hold back because they think that it goes to the preacher's pocket. We might as well tell the truth. They think that he drives y'all offering. Some people think that Nips go get the pastors and y'all's money. But every time you walk through the door, 
and when it's cold outside, it's warm in here. Or when it's hot outside, it's cool in here. Or when you come in here, it's clean in here. Or when you flick on the lights, the lights come on. Or when you go to the restroom, you flush the toilet and the water go down. Or while you're sitting in service, there's people outside watching your car. Do y'all think it's free? See, I could really be nice and really scripturalizing and be like, oh, this, that, and the other. But let me tell you something. Ministry costs. Hallelujah. Y'all talk back to me in here. Don't be quiet on me. Ministry costs. And running a facility this big ain't cheap. So, if you're paying $100 for NIFSCO in your house, could you imagine it probably five times more in this house? If you're running water in your house, and water bill come out what, every month, every two months? And it's $40, $50 in your house? Could you imagine the water bill at this house? But I said all that to say this. The Bible says that after she gave everything and poured everything out, there was still some left over. An old lady told me, she said, you can't be God's giving no matter how hard you try. So let's search ourselves today as we prepare to give our offering. And I learned a long time ago, if they take it and burn it, I gave it as unto the Lord because it's not about me anyway. And if there is no seed planted, don't expect to get a harvest to reap from. Because I don't know about you all, but I know what it feel like to be broke for real, for real. Now I ain't talking about you like, oh, you know, payday coming tomorrow, no, 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 no. I'm talking about broke for real, for real. H have anybody in here been, ever been broke for real, for real? I mean, you got friends, you can't call them. And you're scared to call the ones you know because you already owe them. But God made a way for everything in your house to stay on. So before we receive our offering, I need everybody to stand to their feet. You may say, why you asked me to do that? because he offers you strength in your legs to stand. I need everybody to take a deep breath in and let it out. He offered you breath in your body for you to breathe. So now as we prepare our offering, let's remember that this is the house that blesses us. That this is a house that our children can come and be in safety. That this is the house that the man labors and speaks to us every week. But most importantly, this is the house that the Lord built. Can I get a witness in here? Somebody said, I got a friend, she laughs at me all the time. Because when we give our offering, I always wait to see if they're going to ask for a number. And I just say, give as has God given to you. He requires 10% of every dime that comes into your house and the offering. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift and the givers. God, we thank you for those that are going to sow on this morning. God, we're not sowing out of lack and not out of pity. God, but we're sowing because you blessed us to have seed to sow. And so, God, we thank you in advance right now, God, that even as some of us are sowing, God, that the harvest is yet coming our way. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper and the devourer will be withheld for our sake. And so, God, I ask right now, God, as we sow, God, that God, you're sowing into tuitions. Some of us are sowing into new homes. Some of us are sowing into new companies. Some of us are sowing into new ministries. But the seed have to be planted into your house in order for it to be watered properly. 
and we thank you in advance that you're meeting our needs and that you hear our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. I need everyone to face the outer walls. Your left, my right, and everyone come around the table or the pause started from the rear. Come on, let's be a cheerful giver. still swiping. We're going to wait till they're done. <laughs> Why they still giving? By way of announcement, today is our senior turkey giveaway. Amen. All you seniors that uh, got tickets, um, they're setting up right now on the opposite side, I guess the overflow. They're setting up right now. If you receive the ticket, um, please go over and redeem your ticket. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that Bishop said, if there's anything left over, <laughs> don't be too proud, take it. Um, so please, please, it should be enough for everybody that need a turkey, all right? Um, this Tuesday, um, please log in to see our Roberts Ministries and make sure that we are in attendance in Bible study. Um, not just in the sanctuary, but those online, please make sure that you log in, Ashley, Renee, and yeah, Ashley and Shante, you all, and Lloyd Shell Page, you all make sure you all log in, um, you all that's here, log in, share, like, tag, comment, whatever it takes, I need you all online, amen? Um, tomorrow, amen. Tomorrow at 6 a.m., we will have p.m. Lord have mercy. I'm sorry. Um, tomorrow at 6 p.m., give me the announcement so I, so I can make it right. Intercessor prayer, Monday, 6 p.m. Intercessor's prayer, Monday, 6 p.m. And listen, I don't know about you all, but if you wasn't here on yesterday, for the leadership advance, those you all that was here, make some noise in here. Listen, listen, it was a blessing. Um, our COO, um, joint COOs, they rolled out our uh, requirements for our new vision for the church. Um, Bishop came and he spoke and he imparted. Elder Jackie Jones came from the powerhouse yesterday. And when I tell you that young man prayed and poured, he prayed and poured. Um, listen, uh, Elder Tim, Pastor Tim, did an excellent job on conflict resolution. Amen. Amen. And Deacon Liz, she did an awesome job on grieving. Amen. And grievances. And we just thank God that God is putting us back together, y'all, to make us an effective church. All right? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're all standing. Our bishop is in Chicago with his bishop, Archbishop William Hudson III. 
um, he had a mandate this morning and Bishop needed him, so he had to go. But I thank God that we have mature people here in ministry that we can still be effective in his absence. Amen. Give yourselves a hand. Come on, give yourselves a hand. That was weak. My granddad used to say it's a poor dog that won't wag his own tail. So put your hands together for you. <laughs> Amen. 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 Don't forget, all you seniors, young men, please help them get these turkeys and these boxes to their cars. Don't let them have to lift these boxes, all right? Before we leave, we want to open up the doors of the church. We don't want to take for granted that everybody in this house is saved and know the Lord. We don't want to take it for granted. Because I would rather have God and not need him than to need him and not have him. And they used to say that tomorrow is not promised. But I want to correct them and say today is not promised. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, we thank God for a saved house on today. When we see things like that, what that means is we need to start inviting other people. We need to start and giving them what we get every week. All right? Make a mandate on your row that you will be in charge of filling up your own row. Because trust me, it may be over 700 churches in Gary, but it's double that people that need to be saved. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the people that have assembled together. And God, we even ask for God that you pour back into Minister White everything she spent on today. God, we bind the enemy on every hand to say you shouldn't tell the stories that you've done. But God, we thank you, God, for the testimony that she went through what somebody else is going through. And so, God, we ask for now, God, that even right now, because you pour into Bishop wherever he is preaching, and God, that there will be no backlash on he, his family, his mind, and anything attached to him. And God, we thank you, God, for a mature church, God, that can still function, God, when daddy's away. And we thank you for what you're going to do, God, that everyone in their rightful places, we thank you for your glory filling this place even right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, God. And God, even on this Thanksgiving week, God, let us go through this week being thankful for everything that you've done for us. Every door you open and even every door you've closed, we say thank you. And God, right now, God, as we leave this, prep, this place, but never your presence, lead us, guide us, protect us, heal us, and restore us. In Jesus' name we pray.